Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Ray, and welcome back to video three of our After Effects Basics course. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to transform and animate your clips. So let's jump into it. So how do you transform and make changes to your clips in After Effects? Well, we ended the last video by opening up this little drop down here on our layer by using this triangle. This opens up our transform properties that we can also drop down in a similar way. This is where you have the functionality to impact your clips with each of these different parameters. You can see we have anchor points, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. Each of these has a particular function that you might be able to guess what each of them does. Position moves your clips in the X and Y axis directions. And you can make each of those changes by clicking and dragging left or right on any of these blue numbers here. The first one controls left to right movement, and the second one controls up and down motion. Scale makes your clips bigger or smaller. And not only can you click and move it to make it bigger and smaller, you can also input a specific number that you want to choose instead. But there's two numbers here that just do the same thing. Why? Well, you can see here that there's this little chain icon, and this means that your horizontal and vertical scale are linked together so that your clip keeps its proportion. If we unlink them, then we can scale vertical and horizontal size independently of each other. For now, we're just going to keep them linked though. Rotation here controls the degree to which your clip is rotated. Zero is resting normally, and 90 degrees turns it completely on its side. You can even keep going to rotate it a full 360 degrees. You can also see this number beforehand. This refers to the number of full rotations made by your clip. If it's not being animated, this number makes very little difference. But when we get to animating later on, this can play a vital role. And finally, opacity refers to the transparency of your clip. And right now you can see that when we bring transparency down to zero, our viewer shows white. If you're following along with your project, you'll likely see the background to be black because that's what the default is in After Effects. If you wanted to change it to be a different color, you can easily do that by going up to Composition, Composition Settings, and then down here you can change the color swatch of whatever your background will appear as. But that could get a little bit confusing. Say, for example, if your composition has a solid background in it, but then you also have this neutral solid background to show transparency. So to show transparency better in our viewer, we can go down to this checkerboard icon here and click it. And now whenever there's nothing visible in the background, we can see a checkerboard design instead. Great. You may have also noticed that we skipped over anchor points. Basically, this just tells you where the center of your clip is located. Using anchor points and position at the same time can get a little bit confusing, but it can be helpful to just think about anchor points as changing where the center marker on your footage is. Changing the center point of your footage changes the axis around which your footage rotates. So normally rotating our footage would just look like this. But if we move the anchor point off center, then our footage now rotates around a different center point. The more extreme you push this, the less your footage will just rotate in place and will actually start to orbit a little bit more around a different center point. So now you know how to use the transform tools in your layer. But you can do all of those things with your mouse on the actual viewer up here too. With your selection tool highlighted by clicking it up here or hitting the V key, you can now click and drag your clip around and the topmost clip will be the one that you can control. While you're doing this, it's possible that you might make a mistake and want to bring everything back to normal. There's two ways that I'd suggest doing this. One is to hit edit, undo, or to use the shortcut key, control or command Z. The other thing that you can do is notice what your changes are affecting in your transform options. As we move the position, the position numbers are changing. And to bring it all back to normal, just hit this reset button at the top here. Keep in mind though that the reset button will reset all of these parameters, not just position. Now with it back to normal, try holding shift while moving around your clip. You'll notice that your clip can move along only one axis. This will help you to make very isolated changes, in case, for example, you wanted to animate your clip moving to the right off screen. Which is what we're going to learn how to do now. Bring your clip back to normal, and now let's place our playhead at the beginning of our timeline. Let's let it go for as long as we want the clip to last in this position. And then when we want our clip to move off screen, let's make what's called a keyframe. To make a keyframe, hit the stopwatch button beside the position icon. It's highlighted blue, which means that now any changes we make to position will be monitored, and the difference between them over time will be shown. 
So now let's move forward a bit and make an additional keyframe by clicking this new diamond icon here. To go back and forth between your two keyframes, hit either of these forward or backward arrows here. So right now we don't see our clip changing at all yet. This is because the keyframes say exactly the same thing. But now let's go to the second keyframe and move the position over to the right. A quick little note, if you're using these blue numbers here to scroll, holding shift while making any changes will make it more sensitive and holding either control or command while making these changes will make it very subtle. Try it out for yourself. Great, but now let's move it so that it goes all the way off screen to the right. Now, if we go back to this first keyframe and hit the space bar to play, we can see that we just animated our clip to move over to the right. Guys, that looks great, but we can see that the movement is kind of slow and mechanical. We want it to feel a little bit more fluid. So I'm gonna show you a couple methods that I would prefer to use. To start, let's go to the keyframes here and let's hit the plus button on our keyboard to zoom in more on our timeline. If we move the keyframes closer together, this will make the change happen the same amount, but over a shorter period of time. So the result is that the animation will appear faster. It's getting better, but to make it more fluid, we wanna do something called adding a bezier. Right click on the first keyframe here and select keyframe assist. Then we're gonna go here and choose an option called easy ease. Now we can see that our diamond keyframe changed shape to look more like an hourglass. What this is, is called a bezier, and it lets us know that our animation of this clip is no longer linear, it's non-linear, meaning that it's changing a different amount each frame over time. Here's what that looks like. It starts slow, and then it gets faster as it goes along. It's like it's accelerating. The reason a lot of people think it looks better is because it looks more realistic. Because in real life, normal things don't just reach their top speed instantaneously. Think of a car that starts moving again after the light turns green. It doesn't just go to top speed right away, it needs to accelerate a little bit. But guys, you've just successfully made an awesome looking animation for your clip. You can do the same thing with all of these parameters that are on this list. Scale, rotation, and even opacity to fade in or out your clip. But there's one last thing that I'm going to introduce you to without teaching, so that you can see how much more there is that you can actually do within this program. If you click on a particular parameter that you're making changes to, and then hit this little graph icon here, you can see the animation changes over time on a graph. From here, you can make even more specific changes and really dial in the specific look that you want your animation to have. But this is a really advanced feature that you can come back to after you've finished this course. So to get out of the graph view, just hit the graph icon again. I hope you found this video on animations really helpful. In the next video, we're going to go over how to use layer masks. It's a really essential tool inside of After Effects. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.